Could 2024 presidential candidate Marianne Williamson be the answer to closing the divide between America's left and right? I don't know, but here she is in a recent conversation with Roseanne Barr, the comedian, which shows this might just be a possibility. The majority of people on the left and the right feel and rightfully so, that the government doesn't belong to us now. And then we have disagreements on, well, who do you think it belongs to? I, and many people on right as well as left, think it belongs to the corporations more than it belongs yes. to the people. And that the government at this point does more to serve the corporations than to serve the people. And people are angry about that. And I think people have a right to be angry about that. And it also seems as if the government itself, it works as a corporation. And what bothers me so much about that is that people forget that the last thing that's democratic in the world is a corporation. Here's just a little bit more of that conversation. Whether it's carcinogens in our food or lack of health care or people rationing insulin or, or whatever it is, only because of the greed of an insurance company or a pharmaceutical company and people's lives are falling apart because of it. I don't care whether you're on the left or the right. This is not about left versus right. This is about power versus powerlessness. In short, it's the rich getting richer and the poor getting poorer, the same old, same old. And that's what we have to realize, no matter whether you're on the right or on the left, if you're being screwed by that, you're being screwed by the same forces. Look, this is why people love Marianne. Uh, it's this kind of ability to talk to different kinds of folks, to really focus on the corruption piece of politics, which there is so much support across the board for. It's why Donald Trump was popular in 20, 2016. It's why Bernie Sanders was popular in 2016. Hillary Clinton was such an amazing foil for this anti-corruption message, which I think is largely attributable to why Bernie was more successful that year than in 2020. Um, and so th this, this, I think, really speaks highly of Marianne Williamson's campaign and her ability to communicate, even though she's obviously struggling um, in the polls. And I think the Israel-Gaza situation isn't happening, helping her with uh, the left right now, given her position on that particular issue. But it also is worth remembering who Roseanne Barr is. Roseanne Barr is somebody who apparently attended Clinton's inauguration and was supportive of him back in the day, who ran as a Green Party candidate for president of the United States back in 2012, and who now self-describes or has recently described herself as a Trump supporter. And that can sound kind of kooky and all over the place to people, but if you talk to real folks who similarly have this ideological access where they don't really care about woke stuff and identity politics and don't like the way that that can be weaponized by the Democratic Party, but who are very much anti-corruption, very much kind of pro-worker and pro-labor, very much against this idea that trickle-down economics is going to save us from the vagaries of having to live as a person in America with health care insecurity and the like, then you can end up bouncing around in the way that Roseanne has. Sure. I mean, it's interesting that for the purposes of this discussion, she's being labeled as a conservative or on the right. She, she has been she a big now. fan of Trump. Yeah, sort of. Um, I, I think she has a variety of political views that are, are in fact, kind of all over the place. Um, but, but yes, she's part of that. She's in that quadrant of Trump voters who did come from the left. I mean, you just outlined her history on the left and who saw him as more of a champion of the kind of things you're describing. Um, than, than, for instance, the Clintons. Um, I, I was actually thinking of Roseanne for totally different reasons the other day. Um, as we were discussing and we've been discussing the kind of cancel culture and the cancellation of um, students and activists for saying things that I think are genuinely wrong and very bad about the Israel-Palestine conflict. Well, also, but then to be the clear, idea... some people are being canceled for saying, I support Palestinian not Palestine not being occupied, for carrying Palis uh, Pal the Palestinian flag, for wearing Palestinian colors, even if their jacket ha happens to have nothing to do with Palestine, the way Alicia Keys was just canceled. So to be clear, I, I I people are getting Alicia canceled okay. for completely defensible good things, as well as things that you might personally object sure. to. Um, but I was recall, you know, I was contrasting that with, um, you know, with Roseanne's r total erasure from acceptable society when she made that um, joke about Valerie Jarrett 
um, if you recall, that led to her being canceled from or her show got or she got removed. The show went on without her. The Roseanne show went on without Roseanne. Um, she got totally unpersoned. Uh, there was so much discourse about it, so much shouting at her. The jo so the the accusation was that she'd made a racist joke about Valerie Jarrett. She later said, and I fully believe her, that she did not know uh, Valerie Jarrett was a black woman. Um, I, I think that. To be clear, let's just say what she perception. said. Um, Roseanne said that Valerie Jarrett was a product of the Muslim Brotherhood and Planet of the Apes. Yeah. She later clarified that she did not know Valerie Jarrett was a black woman, which I accept that she didn't know that. Um, very, you know, rude, crude commentary toward a political official. Um, you know, people say all, you know, uh, Cheeto Hitler to Donald Trump, and they don't have their um, comedian careers ruined, or they don't get like blacklisted from Hollywood. I think there was a lot of inconsistency in how she was treated, and it was pretty unfair. Um, so I'm always kind of glad to see her um, surfacing now, which is not to say I agree with like every view she's expressed or to think that she's never said anything offensive. You know, the as comedians, we I think we're supposed to give you greater license to say things that are like deliberately uh, offensive and in incensing people. And I'm not sure what she did that was actually so out of step with or out of character with that and that she deserved what happened to her. Yeah, I, I, I agree in part. Um, I do think that there were, I'm reflecting, I'm going back over all of the statements that were made from all of the cast members and people that worked with her. It does seem a little bit like a situation where she's obviously the title character of a show that, of her own creation and her political views appear to create some tension with the staff and maybe impacted negatively impacted their ability to work together on set and to have chemistry and character on set, which is an interesting question about how to handle that, especially since she's the one that made the show. Right, but it's it her is, show, and it's kind of about her. It's yeah. an exploration of people who had views like her yeah. and how they fit into society and how they get along yeah. with their family members and their neighbors and they she, don't agree with. She intentionally made her character a Trump voter and talked about why that was important to her. And I do think this could have been a really interesting experiment and, yeah. and how to deal with the really, really real divisions that were happening. And instead they yanked families. it all away from her exactly in keeping with the kind of, you know, it, it, intolerance that many Trump supporters, you know, decry that, that they received, that they, you know. Yeah, I, I agree yeah. with that. I also do think, if I recall correctly, and I, I don't, don't quote me on this, sorry, <laughs> but there was initially an apology and then like a backtrack of that apology from Roseanne. And I do wonder how much of that had to do with it. Like if you, if I accidentally said something that was a stereotype or a derogatory statement that is commonly made about a group, not, not knowing the person, not knowing about the stereotype or not knowing that the person I'm talking about was in a group, then that seems like an easy, like apology. Hey, my bad. I didn't know. I think that that was some of the river people who've used the language river to the sea. I think I've been in that situation. Mm -hmm. Like, Oh, I don't, I don't know what that means. I didn't know what that meant like two years ago to people. I so. mean, she, she did. I don't know. I don't remember. She did. I Googled it. She did apologize. She said, I apologize to Valerie Jarrett and all yeah, Americans. Was, I'm truly sorry for making a There was bad definitely joke. an apology. And the, I, I remember oh. the backtrack. What I don't remember is the order, the sequence of events, whether the backtrack was part of why they couldn't make it work on the show, or whether the backtrack happened after the show was mm -hmm. taken from her. Mm -hmm. um, so don't quote me on that aspect of it. But it, it does feel like some of these situations, it was just so like hard. A, she it's wasn't like a human suspended. resources she issue. Wasn't, of, it was just, they took it all away from her. I remember, and it was because I remember being, I was invited, I think I was on NPR to like debate this issue with other people. And it, it, it really did, it, I was being, it felt like I was in a position to like defend the indefensible or something at the time. Like that's the way it was treated. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't that. It just wasn't that big of a thing. <laughs> right. I mean, it was extremely stupid, and I frankly, it, yeah. it did definitely play into a whole right wing eco structure that was calling an ecosystem that was calling Barack Obama a Muslim and saying that that made him ineligible to be the president of the United States of America. We cannot forget how deeply Islamophobic a lot of the attacks were against Barack Obama. Obama who wasn't even Muslim in the first place. Um, so much so that John McCain, when running against him, had to defend him against someone making Islamophobic remarks about him in his own audience. Credit to John McCain for that. So like that was the larger context here, whether or not people's frustration with that reality should have been focused on a comedian and showrunner like uh, Roseanne is a different question, especially because, you know, she's a real talent. 
I, I loved everybody. So many people loved Roseanne. I was not in, in particular a fan of the show, but she has one day I'll see if we can have the rights to it. She has she's told this joke that she just like deadpanned into a camera on, on her phone or something for for Twitter or something. And I think it's so funny. I have it saved. It's like, it's hard to find. I have it saved on my phone. <laughs> I think it's so funny. All right, so it's a joke about Donald Trump that is great. All right. So I'm a fan. I, I, I think she's great. And, and to be clear, I really think the show could have been important. The original Roseanne was so important to humanize and show the lives of working class people on TV. Like, they weren't perfect. Their house was messy. They talked frequently about not being able to make ends meet. She worked in a diner. Like... It, it, it was a very important show for class visibility in the United States. And part of that dynamic in 2016 forward is families being divided over the issue of Donald Trump, which often also became a kind of class issue in and of itself. And so seeing that play out and seeing what would have happened if the more liberal people on her staff that were playing her children, who in real life would likely have been more liberal than their parent— negotiate that while still loving each other and figuring out what the root of all of their animosity really was. Um, I would have loved to see, that would have yeah. been so constructive. It would have been. That is not what happened. It's not yeah. what happened. So, you know, I'm going to be checking out the full interview with Marion Williamson and Roseanne Barr. I'm so glad that she had her on. And I, and I do think it's also a tribute to Marianne and her ability to communicate uh, across all kinds of ideological barriers. Hmm. More rising right after this. 